Okay, here we have the left-hand computer, and we're going to ping the router. And you notice it pings it just fine. We can also ping ourselves, which is 253. And we ping ourselves with no problem. We try to ping the right-hand computer on the same router, which is address 254. Notice we don't get through. So why is that? If we go down here and we right-click on the internet parameters, come up here and we notice we do properties right here. This is public. Your PC is hidden from the devices of the network. Can't be used for printer and file sharing. So we're going to set this to private for a network you trust, such as a home, blah, blah, blah. You can share things. So let's try that first. We'll click private. And now we're, we're set up. We'll go back and try the ping over here again. It still doesn't work. Why is that? Well, the other computer is also set up for private. So let's go over and fix the other computer. So if we come down here, we right-click on the network icon, left-click on Open Network for Troubleshooting. We click over here on Ethernet, and we're going to change advanced sharing options. And you notice we selected private network. We've got turn on network discovery, turn on file sharing, which is already done here. The big one, though, another one I should say, is down here under all networks. We've got turn on sharing so anyone with network access can share. And here at the bottom, we have to turn off password protected sharing. And then you have to make sure you click on save these changes. Now, this is disrupting your normal security, so this is only changed during this ping test. So now, if we go back, and we try to ping. The same thing was done on the other computer, the right-hand computer. So if now we go back and we try to ping the right-hand computer, which is 254, notice it works now. So now we know our pings work between the two computers on the same router. So now let's play around with the router rules and figure out what input, forward, and output have to do with router rules. Okay, here on the router, we establish these bottom three rules just to perform these tests. We have a test drop all forwards. We have a test drop all outputs. We have a test drop all inputs. So as we've already demonstrated, the two computers can, in fact, talk to each other, and they can both talk to the router. Now let's activate this drop all inputs because this should have to do with inputs to the router itself. So if we try to ping the router... That's actually an input to the router. So if we ping it and it fails, you notice it can't access the router. And that's because of this firewall rule, input. So anything you want to input to the router, including a ping request, it's going to be dropped. It's not going to get there. And that's how you protect the configuration of your router. Let's go ahead and disable that. We'll turn on, what about outputs? router outputs. That's supposed to be everything that the router generates will be dropped too. So if that's the case and we come down here and we ping the router, we shouldn't get a ping back because although it took the input request for a ping, it can't send the output which is a reply to the ping. So it's pretty obvious from this right here that the router's Input and output is affected by those fire ru firewall rules. So now let's go ahead and with the output thing, let's ping 253, which is the other computer. Notice it works fine because it doesn't use the output rule. If we come down here and we turn off the output rule, turn on the input rule, Go back and try to ping the other computer again. You notice that the ping works just fine because from one device on the same network to the other device on the same network, input and output chains are not used. So now let's turn that one off. So now let's go up here and 
enable the drop all forwards and the other two are disabled. And sure enough, if we start up this guy, try to talk to the computer, we won't get a re we do get replies. At this point in time, we've realized that devices on the same LAN are peer-to-peer -peer and they don't use the router. They're not an input to the router, not an output to the router. They're not being forwarded to something outside of the router. Therefore, they don't go through these rules. So let's prove that. We have the forward rule, output rule, and input rule. All of them are active. We go ahead and we start up the ping. Sure enough, it replies just fine because the computers themselves know about the other computers. They've discovered each other on the internet and they just talk to each other. They don't need any stinking firewall. They just talk to each other. So this is why it's dangerous to have your computers able to see each other on a LAN system such as the Microtech router. I personally keep them isolated so if I get a corruption on one computer you can't go over and corrupt the other computers. And this demonstrates that. If you notice I try to ping the router, it's not, definitely not going to go through. It's going to meet the input and the output criteria of a ping request going in and a ping response coming out, so it's not going to work. And it doesn't care about forwarding. So when does forwarding actually use? There's one thing you have to keep in mind while we're doing these ping tests, and that is that there's connections up here. We do, you notice right now, there's no ping connection. If I come down here and I, if we run this ping on Google, you notice right here we have the Google address right here. We've created a connection with that ping. If you go back here and you try to change the firewall rules and make it on or a forward ping, then if this connection still exists, it will ignore the forward because it's not using that rule. So it's using a rule up here for an established connection. It already has established connection, so it's not going to use these rules down here at the bottom. It's going to bail out up here. So you can get false results if you're not paying attention. So you always have to make sure that the uh, rule you're trying to enforce is before some other rule is going to pass it. So you have to pay attention to the connections, what connections are already existing, because if the connection already exists, then it's then it goes back to the firewall rule up here and accepts it and sends it out. It doesn't need to be forwarded. It's already being tracked and established. Okay, at this point in time, we have line 10 activ activated, which drops all forward. So if we go down here and we start up our command, to Google, ping Google, notice it fails, it's not working. So if we go back and we disable that rule, then start up command line again, notice it does work. So the forwarding does affect things, leaving the router, such as going to google.com. So in closing, what we've demonstrated is that the drop all inputs only has to do with things that have to go into the router itself, the operating system of the router. And the drop all outputs only affects things that the router operating system has to send out of the router. And drop forwards only affects things that come into the router from a device on the router and has to be passed outside of the router. As we've demonstrated, the drop forward has nothing to do with two devices on the same LAN system, the same bridge, the same router. They just talk to each other at will as long as their operating system allows them to, to expose themselves to that LAN system. So hopefully this narrows down the various concepts of the input forward and output chains of the Microtech firewall system.